With four games to play, we're going to break down the playoff race in both the AFC and the NFC right now. Chris Hassel joined in studio by Pete Prisco. We have Charles Davis with us as well, who's calling an interesting game this week. Lions and Jets, two teams just on the outside looking in in the playoff race. Let's start in the NFC, guys, where it's, it's a little bit more clear cut right now. The Eagles in great position to get the bye at 12-1. and one. Uh, They've got the Cowboys coming up next week, though. Vikings and Niners can wrap up their divisions this week. Whoever wins the NFC South is going to host a playoff game. Seahawks a half game out. Lions right there as well. We're we're still saying the Packers have a chance here, along with the the Panthers and Falcons who are in that uh, awful division. Over in the AFC, Bills in position for the bye with the head-to-head tiebreaker over Kansas City. Ravens have the head-to-head tiebreak over the Bengals right now, but they'll play again the last week of the season. Titans still a two-game lead in their division. Three-way tie for that last playoff spot, that last wild-card spot. Patriots have the tiebreaker over the Chargers and the Jets. All right, let's start, Pete, with the Kansas City Chiefs, who are in position to clinch this division. And who would have thought that going into the season when we, when we were talking about, is this the greatest division of all time, that Kansas City, with a win, would be the first AFC team to clinch their division? Remember, it was the SEC of the NFL. <laughs> no, it wasn't, because a lot of teams didn't live up to the hype. I mean, the Broncos were terrible. The Raiders haven't lived up to the hype. They can't hold the lead. And then you have the Chargers up, down, up, down, vintage Chargers and a ton of injuries. So it's not surprising the way it's played out that Kansas City can clinch. They're the best team. What I saw last week, though, on defense was a little concerning. Yeah, they made some big plays on defense. They had a pick six for a touchdown. They had some sacks. But they allowed the Broncos to score points. That should never happen. The Broncos' offense is awful. So that's a little alarming for the Chiefs, but they're going to cruise to win this division. Uh, They're the best team in that division by far. Absolutely, Pete. No question about it. And you both know that I get a lot of things wrong. This is one I had conviction on from day one. And for once, it played out. A lot of people were saying this is the year to go get Kansas City. But I watched their offseason when Andy Reid turned the reins over to Patrick Mahomes and canceled one of their OTAs or mini camps and said, Patrick, you take it. Take these guys to Texas, wherever you want to go. You get it going. You take ownership. You rally it. And he seized the opportunity. Let's be honest about it. Does he miss Tyreek Hill? Absolutely. But did he want to tell Ty- show Tyreek Hill what he was missing? He certainly did. And he took full full ownership of this team, leadership, you name it, and they have rallied behind him. And Pete, I agree with you. Defensively, that was a little bit of a a wake-up call to me about Kansas City. They remind me a lot of Indianapolis when Peyton Manning was there. Built to play with a 14-0 lead. You worry when it gets a little bit tighter that way with the defense. They can make plays, but they are certainly constructed with the lead to go get people. So that would be interesting to see how it plays out down the stretch. The one thing they do have, and all the good teams have to have it if you're going to make a Super Bowl run, is a game wrecker on defense. And that's Chris Jones. And and it doesn't matter where they come from. It could be an edge rusher. It could be a playmaker in the back end. But they have one who plays down in their defensive line, and Chris Jones is a game wrecker. You need a sack, fumble, game over late in the fourth quarter. He's the guy to go get it. So that's what they do have, but I'm with you. That was a little little bit alarming last week for Kansas City. They're going to be pulling yeah. for their former teammate Tyreek Hill this week because uh, the Dolphins have the Bills on Saturday. The Bills, if, if they went out, they're going to get the bye because of the head-to-head over Kansas City. Buffalo right now is in position to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And their schedule's tough. I mean, they have to go to Cincinnati still. That, that's, you know, that's a tough game as well. This is not an easy game. And they haven't looked right on offense. I think they went out and signed Cole Beasley to the practice squad to probably elevate him up to see how if he's in good shape because you've seen McKenzie drop balls. He's had a problem with drops in that offense. There's no rhythm. I also pointed out, and you saw it, Chris, we pointed out last week, Spencer Brown's been terrible at right tackle, so they have to help him and chip with him, and it takes people out of the passing game. So I think there's a couple things holding the offense back. Defensively, they're still really good. I'm not worried about the Buffalo offense. I think they will get it cranked up. And by the way, there's indications it might be snowing in seven inches of snow maybe on Sunday in Buffalo. We'll see what two is made of when he goes up there. He's had two bad games. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out as well. And, and to follow up on that, let's take the Miami perspective real quickly. The last two weeks, they were in San Francisco, got jumped on, stayed out on the West Coast to, to practice, et cetera. 
went and played the Chargers, got jumped on. Now they have to fly home to Miami and then go to Buffalo for a Saturday night game instead of a Sunday game. So a lot of things working against them, conspiring, the weather being one of them, the Buffalo defense being another. I'm with you on the Buffalo offense. I think the, the signing of Cole Beasley, if he's ready to go, I think is a great move for them. Immediately upgrades them in the slot. John Brown coming in to try and help the receiving core a little bit. But the one worry I have is the one I had all the way back to the draft last year. Who is your short yardage runner in December and January? And right now it's still Josh Allen. And we know he's capable, but that doesn't mean I have to like it because I don't think my quarterback should be my short yardage guy in crucial situations. But that's how Buffalo plays it and that's how they run it. And the other thing is, don't forget, New England still comes to their place to finish things off. Buffalo comes to their place. The Jets came to their place to finish. You're right, Pete. They've got Cincinnati. But the rest of the schedule, most people have to come to Buffalo that they have to deal with. For the Miami Dolphins, still in playoff position, but only a one-game cushion now. They're going to have to do something down the stretch if they're going to get into this thing. We have three teams tied for the last wild card spot, and it changed hands a couple of different times this week. The Jets were in position, then the Chargers. Patriots ended up uh, getting that last spot going into next week because they have the tiebreaker. Sportsline likes the Chargers to get that spot 53% of the time. Charles, you've got one of these teams this week with the Jets taking on the Lions. Yeah, and, and boy, it's going to be fun race to the end, isn't it? And the Jets, who were so hot at one point, were 6-3. and three. It's been a tough go lately. And all crushing, tough, dif difficult games. The loss at Minnesota because they couldn't put touchdowns up in the red zone. Last week against Buffalo, it felt like they were getting blown out, and then they found a way, a safety, a block punt, and next thing you know, they're putting pressure on the Bills. Their defense holds up in a big way, so they're always in it, and Mike White, he's as tough as they come. But how's this for a weird stat? Zach Wilson was 5-2 and two as a starter. He got benched. Mike White is 1-2, and two, and there's no question the offense is better with him. So maybe we need to stop giving quarterbacks records like we do starting pitchers because there's no doubt Mike White is that guy. And I can't wait to see how he operates against one of the hottest teams in the league, the Detroit Lions, who are blowing people away on offense. And their defense has jumped up in a monster way and is playing really, really well. And now you're looking at the Lions and you're going, oh boy, this has the makings of a heck of a ball game and it will be physical come Sunday. Nobody's going to want to hear this in South Florida, but we keep talking about those three teams as the potential last one. Miami's in play as well. And the reason I say that, you mentioned they didn't play well on the West Coast. They play at Buffalo this week. That's a tough game. And then their schedule is Green Bay at New England, home against the Jets. That's not an easy way to close it out. This is the moment that Mike McDaniel gets challenged as a coach. You know, it's all fun and everything's going great early in the season. He's a new guy. He's bringing a fresh approach. But now you have two losses and you're going on the road. How does he get his team to respond? And what happens if they don't beat Buffalo and there's even more pressure? So I think this is a big week for Miami, and there's a chance that they could end up the team that doesn't make the playoffs. Hey, you saw the numbers there from Sportsline and the Chargers with the, the best percentage chance of those three teams that we talked about to get in at 53%. The Dolphins at 63%. So, I mean, it's not like they're a shoe-in at this point, as you mentioned, Pete. The Dolphins. The Chargers, aren't we going to expect up. the Chargers to charge you at some point? I mean, I, it's like become a thing. The Chargers are going to charge you. That's just too So, they you don't are. think they're getting in? Uh, I think, I, look, they should. On paper, they should. But we've seen this play out over the course of their history. Injuries have decimated that team at times. We saw it last week. They were decimated. Somehow they won that game. And Justin Herbert is phenomenal. I get it. But And last week, they let him throw the ball down the field. He had his receivers. But don't you sit back, and believe me, I love watching the kid play football. Don't you sit back and say, at some point, the Chargers are going to charge her? They've done it a few times well, this well, season already, Charles. And real quick on that, the, for me, tell me real quick, real quickly, Chris, who the Chargers have down the stretch. Because if you're going to run the football and commit to it, you put a lot of stress on that Chargers defense. They spend the whole offseason trying to fix that. And as Pete pointed out, a bunch of injuries have occurred, et cetera, et cetera. And people are still running the football if you stay committed to it against the Chargers. So that's where I think is going to be the interesting thing. If you look at them and your team built to run the football and you don't stay committed with it against the Chargers, 
then you're making a horrible mistake as a coaching staff. And here, come, here comes Derrick Henry, right. and there comes Jonathan Taylor, right. right, the next two weeks. Titans and Colts next two weeks, and then it's the Rams. And oh, Broncos. by the way, those two franchises are committed to running mm-hmm. the football. Yep. These are not two franchises that think about it, talk about it, tell us they're going to do it, and then throw it. Oh, no, 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 no. Anything comes through that plate, through that headset that isn't handing it to Henry or handing it to Jonathan Taylor is going to get questioned in these in these ball games against the Chargers. Talking AFC playoff picture with Charles Davis and Pete Prisco. Let's go to the AFC North. It's the only division in football where there's a tie at the top. It's the Ravens and the Bengals. And Pete, this surprised me. The numbers from Sportsline. I think most people at this point would rather have the Bengals. They're playing better football. They're on a winning streak. They went to the Super Bowl last year. The Ravens are the favorites. And the Ravens win it 62% of the time in the sports line sims. Well, that's because of the schedules. It's a clear indicator. Well, the, the Ravens schedules. have to go to Cincinnati but at the end you of the You look year. at the rest of their schedule, it's much more favorable for, for uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Look at that. It's at Cleveland, a- Atlanta, Pittsburgh, home, and then at Cincinnati. I get it. The Cincinnati game is tough. It's on the road. But look at that schedule. They have Buffalo, at New England, and at Tampa Bay. It's a much tougher schedule. That's why it's, in, it's indicative indicative of that because of the of the the schedule but here's the thing the one thing you notice about the Bengals is their defense is getting better and better and better and that's the difference in this Bengals team now they have some injuries Hendrickson is hurt that's a concern but they can get after the quarterback and uh, you know they can score points when everybody's on the field so they're the better team in my mind I would think that the Bengals if you're in a playoff team if you're one of the teams that gets in the postseason you'd rather play the Ravens than the Bengals but I think the way it's going to play out is the schedule is going to favor the, the Ravens in this scenario. And even with that schedule, who is going to take the snaps at quarterback for the Ravens? Because we know Lamar Jackson has been hurt. They're targeting, I believe, the Christmas Eve weekend for him to come back. But even so, is he back at 100% where he can run around? The good thing is they got J.K. Dobbins back. They've got Gus Edwards back. So that's a big help for them. But if he's not available or he's not 100%, is Tyler Huntley even going to be available? Concussion this past week. Anthony Brown finished the game for the Ravens. So even with the schedule, if Anthony Brown is your quarterback, it changes the math on what you're doing in those games as well. It brings you back to the pack a little bit. And now all of a sudden your schedule may not be as favorable as you thought. So that's going to be the interesting part. And Pete, I think I'm with you 100%. The Bengals are playing the best football right now. I don't care who they're playing right now. They can play and beat everyone that's on that schedule. And Chris, you've heard of Joe DiMaggio, the Hall of Fame, you know, uh, center fielder for the Yankees. At one point in his career, there was a band called the Les Brown Orchestra that wrote a song called Joe DiMaggio, We Want You on Our Side. They are going to write a song in Cincinnati about Joe Burrow being on their side. And to me, that's the biggest difference in that division. Pete, you watched DiMaggio firsthand, didn't you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. with Marilyn Monroe, maybe later on in his life, but no, I didn't. I didn't watch it firsthand. By the way, uh, I see this rundown. We don't have the AFC South mentioned in here. How come? Well, it's a it's race. All, uh, yeah. It's not over. Uh, yeah. oh. It's not over. You think over. the Jags can catch Here's, or two here's what has to happen. You ready? Yeah. If the Titans lose two more games and Jacksonville wins two of the next three, that final game of the season will be. Win and you're in. Think about that. Well, you are quite the homer. Pete. No, I'm not. I, I, I don't think it's happening, but I know some people that I work with have guaranteed that. See you, Tony Baselli. <laughs> and, and, that, and, that and that would be on NBC on a Sunday nighter because they love the win and end game to finish the season. Oh, yeah. And it, the, the Titans right now, they've lost three in a row. Jaguars, they're, they're looking to put a couple of weeks together because they've looked well, they play, in spurts. Titans play at the Chargers. Then they have home against the Cowboys. Essentially, Jacksonville's playing a mini playoff game this week, hosting the Cowboys. They win it, they have a legitimate shot. Interesting. Who would have thought that uh, just a few weeks ago with the Titans sitting there at 7-2? and two. All right, Charles, Pete, we're going to come back with you and look at the NFC in just a second, but let's put a bow on the AFC playoff picture with four games to go. The Detroit Lions, ooh, making a push. They've won five of six, and they've got a chance. We'll talk NFC next. Take a look at the NFC playoff picture with four games to go. The Cowboys are four games better than the Bucs, but the Bucs would host a playoff game and the Cowboys would have to go on the road uh, unless they pass the Eagles and win the NFC East. Right now, all four NFC East teams are in. The Seahawks a half game out, the Lions a game and a half out. 
All right, let's break it down. Chris Hassel, Pete Prisco, and Charles Davis with you here. Now, if the Eagles beat the Bears this week and the Cowboys next week, they would wrap up home field advantage in the one seed with two games to play. Would that be a good thing for the Eagles to have two meaningless games at the end of the year to rest up, or would you rather have those things mean something? No, I want to. I want to lock up the you number just one. Just have it done. With I want the number one seed. I don't want to have any chances of losing the number one seed. You lock it up. If you want to play some guys, you play some guys. But no, I, absolutely not. Go win it. Go lock it up. End the thing, and then you can deal with that. And that's a pleasant, pleasant problem to have. Yeah, I agree with you, Pete, on that one. I mean, no one really wants to say let's play all the way through. Typically, when people talk about playing their starters all the way. It's because you're trying to kickstart your team. It's because things haven't gone quite as well. Tom Coughlin gave us that great blueprint when the Giants were in the playoffs and they played the Patriots when they were undefeated. And Tom Coughlin played his guys in that game, you know, all the way through, even though they were locked into their seating. And then everyone looked back later when they won the Super Bowl, like that's that's the way. We'll also remember teams who won 14 straight, rested people down the stretch and still got to the Super Bowl. So I don't think there's any total right way or wrong way. It's just a matter of how you do things in your practices, how you do things in, in, in getting ready, what your preparation is, and what you're trying to do to stay sharp. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm with Pete. You don't ever mess around with the number one seed and whether you're going to secure it or not. Take it when you can. Lions just want to get a seed. They just want to get in. There's still a game and a half out of that last playoff spot. It's still a long shot. Sportsline giving them just a 13% chance to get in, but how dangerous would they be if they get in, Pete? Well, with that offense, they would be really dangerous. And, and, you know, for all the criticism Jared Goff has taken over the years, he's been outstanding this year. And some of the criticism has been unwarranted, at least in my mind. He's an easy target. For whatever reason, he, you know, the, he, the, he was not a star of stars with the Rams. But he's become a much better quarterback and a much better passer. I think he's playing with confidence. And... The Lions have to make a decision. Is he in a couple, you know, he's got a couple years left in his deal, but is he the long-term answer in Detroit? Or is he a guy that they're going to draft a quarterback and then let him play a year or two and then let the draft pick play eventually, much like, you know, the Chiefs did with Alex Smith uh, in that situation with Patrick Mahomes. I think he's played well enough to earn the job, and I'm impressed with the Lions. They're fun to watch. And here's the other thing. The defense, ever since they fired a defensive backs coach, the defense has played much better. Aiden Hutchinson's getting after the quarterback. Uh, the secondary's playing much better. They're a dangerous team, but their schedule's tough down the stretch as well. They have a bunch of little mini playoff games because they're six and seven. Everything's a playoff game, including this week against the Jets. And don't forget Big Dan Campbell. I mean, look, he is theater. We know that, all right? Ever since he is his first press conference, from that moment on, when Dan Campbell comes up, everyone smiles, talks about their favorite Dan Campbell thing, the whole deal. But I've watched him mature himself as a head coach. And I thought his presser yesterday was particularly informative because everyone has talked about how well the youngsters are playing for them. Guys they got in the draft, young players that they're building around, obviously Jared Goff. And he talked about some of the old heads on the team who people don't talk about very much. Even Michael Brockers, who's been inactive lately on the defensive line. Jared Davis is in his second tour of duty with, with this team. Those guys who have been around, seen how rough it's been, and can help guide them. Some of them were on playoff teams under Jim Caldwell, like Jared Davis was. So I love where Dan Campbell is going with this team and how he's guiding them. And yeah, his aggressiveness may have cost them along the way, but at the same time, that team will kill for him now. You saw what happened when he ran that play for Panay Sewell. You saw what happened on a fourth and eight, and they ran a fake punt, which was really bad football strategy, but they made it work, and that team will go over the wall for Dan Campbell. So this is a very dangerous group right now, and a lot of people are saying it, and I think it's true. If they get in, maybe they're the team you don't want to deal with. They've got a lot of momentum built up. And offensive coordinator Ben Johnson is a coach, coaching star, mm -hmm. from what I hear from people I talk to. Uh, let's go to a division that uh, doesn't have any stars other than Tom Brady, and his stars fading quickly, it seems. Woo! The NFC South. Somebody's got to win it. Whoever it is likely going to be under 500. And believe it or not, yes, the Bucks control their own fate. They're in first. But the Panthers do as well. If the Panthers win out, they're in. Yeah, but I think the Bucks could take the approach. And they, their schedule, you know, they play, they play the Bengals. That's, on a, that's a tough game. The, bang, uh, the Bucks could take the approach of if we beat the Falcons and the Panthers, we're in. Period. End of story. Game over.
So they have two games in the division they have to win. Now, having said that, this is not a team right now that's constructed to beat anybody. They have problems on the offensive line. Brady's been off. He's been jumpy. Uh, you know, I always used to say he sees ghosts when he sees when he starts getting hit, and he's seeing ghosts right now. His head's spinning. He's not accurate. He's not. He, the timing isn't good. Julio Jones can get down the field, and he doesn't hit him. Well, a lot of that has to do with Julio Jones hasn't practiced all year. He's been hurt. Big surprise. He's been hurt the last couple of years. So I think the Bucks have problems. They're still probably the best team in the division. But watch out for Carolina. That's a young team on the rise. And those guys are starting to believe in themselves. And I think that's the biggest difference. You have an older team against a younger team. Are you saying we've gone full circle on Sam Darnold? Is that what we're talking about here? No, they win, they win yeah. despite him because they run the did, ball did, and they play did, good defense. Did, did you take your shovel and dig Sam Darnold back up <laughs> as if you buried him all this time? Look, bottom line is simply this. This Bucks offensive line is not anywhere close to what they signed up for for this season. And that's a big reason they're having trouble. They don't run the ball. They don't even bother. And throwing it has become problematic because the pressure's in the pocket. But at the end of the day, do any of us expect anyone other than Tampa to come out of the NFC South? I think the answer is no. And give Steve Wilkes a lot of credit in Carolina. He has forced that ownership group to consider him to be the permanent head coach. Kudos to him. I hope he gets that opportunity. But I still think Tampa comes out of this division. Me too. He got a raw deal in Arizona. Mm. Me too. All right, four games to go. We'll see if uh, the Panthers can make some hay. Like we said, they, they went out, and they would be the team going to the postseason. But the Buccaneers right now are in playoff position at 6-7. and seven. Uh, Everybody else right there with a winning record, all four NFC East teams are currently in with the Commanders and Giants getting those last two spots thanks to their tie. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.